Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new video. Now this one is going to be a little bit different than my usual videos I release on this channel, but I just simply could not resist. Pokemon Go has been absolutely taking over everything. I mean, I always see everyone talking about it. So many people are playing it and the craze is just out of this world. So for this video, I decided, you know what? I want to make one Pokemon Go video talking about just tips and tricks, things that I recommend you keep in mind and actually know about because if I knew these when I was playing at the very beginning, I feel like it would have made things a lot easier. So we'll be going over what I consider to be the more or less 10 must know tips and tricks when playing Pokemon Go. So here's my collection very quickly. Now I'm almost level 19, level 18 at the very moment and I have several Pokemon over 1000 but I'm still obviously trying to get them even higher. But so far this is what I have. Obviously not the best Pokemon collection in the entire world, nor the highest level, but I have been spending a lot of time playing Pokemon Go, finding stuff about this myself, researching about a lot of things online as well, and I hope this video will prove to be useful. So let's get right into the very first thing I want to talk about, and this one is going to be more or less a very general thing to keep in mind. Now I highly recommend trying to catch as many Pokemon as you can, even when you see those Pidgeys, or those Weedles, or the Caterpies, or even the Drowsies, catch them all, because usually getting Pokeballs isn't the hardest thing in the entire world. I have found several areas around where I live, maybe a 5 or 10 or even 15 minute drive or even bus where, you know, there's a lot of Pokestops. I mean, you just make one route and you can keep farming them over and over and over. So getting Pokeballs really should not be a problem and catching as many Pokemon as possible will give you as much candy as possible, which will work for something I have a bit later on into this video. You'll get a lot of experience because honestly, trainer level is pretty much everything in this game. And for Pokestops, they do you refresh every five minutes or so. So, I mean, you can easily make one route around some area with a decent amount of Pokestops and you can probably farm that out for maybe 30 minutes or so and you'll be good to go for a long time. Now speaking of catching Pokemon, there's one little trick you can do to slowly make your experience bar go up just a little bit more, and that's curving your Pokeball. You can spin it, you can throw it to the side, and it will curve, and if you do it correctly, you'll get about 50 extra experience. Now this is something very important to keep in mind, because whenever you're catching maybe one of those weaker Pokemons, the ones you're just catching for the sake of catching, like a Riddle, like a Rattata, a Drowsy, or whatever, and they're fairly low CP or combat power, then you might as well try and spin the Pokeball and try to get that little bit of extra experience because chances are catching that Pokemon shouldn't be all that difficult to begin with. All you have to do is simply spin the Pokeball as you see it starts spinning on your screen, throw it off to the side, it'll curve to the center towards the Pokemon you're trying to catch and if you do it correctly you'll get extra experience. The same thing applies to the ring you see around the Pokemon that constantly keeps shrinking. Whenever you throw the Pokeball and it gets inside the ring, you'll get also bonus experience. The smaller the ring you do this with, the more experience you get. And the color of the ring shows the difficulty of the catch from green to yellow to orange to too red. So be careful of the higher ones. Now whenever you're actually trying to find Pokemon or trying to stalk them out, the footprints at the very bottom right obviously do mean something. Whenever you see a Pokemon with three steps, that means it is relatively close to where you currently are, and if you walk the right direction for maybe a few minutes, then it'll slowly start getting closer and the footprints will decrease down to two, down to one when you're very close to it, and if it's right around you but it hasn't loaded yet, it'll have zero footprints. And if you ever see a Pokemon you're trying to find with zero footprints, essentially you want to just stand still, wait maybe a couple of seconds, and it'll probably appear. But another thing that's very important to remember that I feel like a lot of people might not know about is when you open up that nearby Pokemon list, if they're all for example at 3 footprints, the order of the Pokemon in which they're listed is actually important. Because the one that's listed at the very top left is actually the closest to your current location, while the one at the very bottom right is the farthest. And this can greatly help your potential to find a Pokemon when they're all listed as 3 footprints because it does make things a little bit more difficult and awkward. Well, we've talked about finding Pokemon, we've talked about catching Pokemon, but what about when you already have a lot of Pokemon? What exactly do you want to do with them? One of the main things is to use your Stardust and level them up. But I feel like a lot of people will sort of waste their Stardust, especially at the lower ranks. Now, you don't want to waste Stardust because it is very valuable later on into the game, because this is the primary way to actually level up the CP of your Pokemon. For instance, at the very beginning with low level CP Pokemons, yeah, it's gonna not really cost all that much Stardust, but for me currently to level up a lot of my higher level Pokemons, it'll cost me anywhere from 1000 to almost 2000 Stardust per level. So my really huge 
huge recommendation or tip right here is don't waste your stardust early on. Wait till your higher trainer level, maybe 10 or plus. Wait till you can start catching those higher CP Pokemon in the wild. And then once you get those higher ones, that's when you want to start considering using your stardust. Only use stardust on Pokemon you actually care about, the ones you'll be using to take over gyms and essentially your main roster. Don't waste it too much on other Pokemon, ones that you barely will use. But speaking of higher CP Pokemon, like I just said, trainer level is, in my honest opinion, everything in this game. The higher the trainer level you are, the higher the chance you have to get better Pokemon, whether it's finding higher CP Pokemon in the wild, or being actually able to level up your Pokemon to a higher CP level to begin with. Because yes, you can only level Pokemon to a certain amount of CP based on your trainer level. If you're level 8, you'll only be able to go up so much until the game tells you you cannot level this Pokemon up any further because of your trainer level. This is why I always say try to catch as many Pokemon as possible, try to get as many of those Pokestops as possible as well, because trainer level does mean everything. The higher the trainer level you are, the faster, the better your Pokemon roster will eventually become. But the final trick I'll be talking about in this video is a very neat way to try and boost up that level much quicker. Whenever you evolve a Pokemon, usually it's for one of two reasons. The first of which being, yeah, this is a Pokemon you care about, this is something you want to evolve, and you want to train, make a higher CP level, and essentially make one of your main roster Pokemon. The other reason is simply for experience, which again I'll talk about as the last tip in this video. Now, whenever you're considering to level up a Pokemon, you always want to look at the little bar right above the actual Pokemon when you look at its statistics. This is extremely important, because it usually does take a fair number of candies to level up the Pokemon, and if you don't have enough, because you didn't catch enough of that single Pokemon, then it can be a little bit difficult of a choice to make. But in general, you want to look at it this way. Is this a Pokemon you care about? Okay, now look at the bar on top of the Pokemon. Is it near the end? Is the half circle at the very end of what it can be? Or is it at least somewhat close? Because whenever you do evolve the Pokemon, your evolved Pokemon will maintain this little bit of a curve on this little half circle. So if you evolve your Pidgeotto to a Pidgeot and the CP on the Pidgeotto was not very high and the curve on it was pretty much near the beginning, your Pidgeot is going to be quite low level and it's gonna be a little bit difficult to level them up further so you usually want to wait till you catch a Pokemon that you want to level up in the wild that's a fairly high CP level maybe boost it a couple of times yourself and then evolve it and you'll be very thankful Next up, let's talk a little bit about the gym battles, because this is definitely one of the main things about Pokemon. I mean, this is pretty much what you're catching and leveling up your Pokemon to do, to destroy other gyms from other teams and have your Pokemon be chilling at the very top and looking all epic. It's a very feels-good moment whenever you have your Pokemon as the highest level in the gym. You are essentially the gym leader, and everyone sees it and tries to take it down. But whenever you're trying to take down gyms, whether it's an enemy gym or to prestige your own team's gym, the best way to battle is just to spam your attack on the Pokemon as fast as possible. Dodging hasn't really seemed to be all that useful, it kind of seems like a waste of time. You just want to attack as fast as possible, use your special abilities as well, and obviously try to use Pokemon against other Pokemon that will be super effective. But if you're chilling with your friends, hunting Pokemon, and also taking over gyms, you can all fight the gym together. I'm not sure up to how many people, but let's say you had three friends, all of you can go in, fight the same gym together, but keep in mind that all of you will be taking damage together as well. The damage is shared. But the benefit to this is the fact that you will be doing essentially four times the damage to the Pokemon you're fighting, so clearly it'll make things much easier. But another thing a lot of people might be a little bit curious about or wondering how exactly it works is the gym level. How does this work? What does this mean? Well, the gym level is based on the amount of Pokemon that are essentially stationed at the gym. And the way you make the gym level higher is by putting either stronger Pokemon in there, which will kind of give the gym a little bit of experience from what I've noticed, or you can fight your own team's gym. No one will actually die. Your Pokemon won't die. It'll get to one HP if it ever does technically die in the battle. But you're essentially fighting your own gym to prestige it. You're gaining experience for it because again, you want to gain levels for the gym because that opens up extra slots as to Pokemon you can put in. But do remember that you can only have one Pokemon per gym. If you put a Pokemon that is the highest level in the gym, let's say there's seven people and you're the highest one, that's the best option to have if possible because it means whenever an enemy team tries to take over your gym, you will have the highest chance to remain in the gym as long as possible and maybe even stay there for longer because the team just simply cannot kill every single Pokemon in the gym. If your Pokemon is the weakest in the gym, then chances are you will be knocked out first and you will be the easiest person to knock out as well. But after you're done farming gyms, you can instantly go to the store. The top right, it'll have a little icon telling you how many gyms you currently have Pokemon in, and you can press that button every 22 hours. It'll give you a little bit of a reward. And this reward will consist of 500 Stardust per gym you have controlled, and it'll also give you a little bit of those gold coins that you can use in the store to buy extra things. 
Next, let's very quickly talk about those eggs because these eggs are very important. They're something that you should always have hatching because you get free experience, you get free stardust, free candy, and free Pokemon. There are several ways to hatch eggs. I mean, you have to have your app open at all times, first of all, but you can either just simply walk around, maybe bike, attach your phone to your dog and let it run around as well. You can even hatch them and stack up the kilometers in your car as long as you're going maybe 30 kilometers or less. But the best thing about the eggs is that it can give you Pokemon and you can get a lot of candy for that specific Pokemon you just hatched, which is extremely useful. But here very quickly is a chart as to what Pokemon so far we know you can get from all the three different eggs, the 2km, the 5km, and the 10km. And the final tip of this video that I want to talk to you guys about is a very important one. This is one of the best ways to level up other than just spam catching Pokemon. So I'm sure most of you have seen those lucky eggs in your inventory that give you double experience for 30 minutes. Now these are very useful, make sure not to waste them. And here's the best way to use them as well to get maximum experience. You want to catch as many Pidgeys, Weedles, and Caterpies as possible because these are the Pokemon that only require 12 candy to level up or to evolve. This is extremely important because as far as I know, it doesn't matter which Pokemon you're evolving, they all give the same experience being 500, but if you have the egg on, that's 1000. So you stack up on these Pokemon, activate the egg, and you start evolving every single one as long as you have enough candy, and then you get a ridiculous amount of experience. And make sure to transfer all of your low level Pidgeys or Pidgeotas for extra candy because you get one candy per Pokemon you transfer for that type of Pokemon, which you can also use to evolve another Pidgey after that. But even better, you can do this while you're about to hatch some eggs, especially if you haven't really discovered a lot of Pokemon just yet from the eggs themselves because again hatching an egg will give you experience if you find a Pokemon from the egg you haven't found yet that'll be even more experience and then you double everything and that's gonna be quite a bit but that's probably the best ways or one of the best ways to use your lucky eggs to hatch again you can also do this while walking around maybe some Pokestops because those also give experience but there you guys have it, my 10 must know tips and tricks when playing Pokemon Go. I do hope that these were informative or useful and that maybe you have learned something new. If you did enjoy this random Pokemon video on my channel, then let me know by hitting that like button. If you found it useful or informative, then let me know as well. Make sure to share this with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, check out my other videos as well that are League of Legends. But I truly thank each and every one of you for watching, and I hope to see you for my next video. Peace.